If you're familiar with the video I did um, on the experimental platform T2, then you're probably at least slightly familiar with IPFS, which I intend to explain today. IPFS, similar to BitTorrent, which I would like to point out is legal unless you're using it to pirate content or something, is a decentralized file sharing network. Unlike BitTorrent, however, which focuses on creating many networks dedicated to sharing one file, IPFS is one large decentralized system which contains all devices running IPFS. Similarly, though IPFS shares some similarities with the structure in BitTorrent uh, with a few key differences, the goals of IPFS are also similar to BitTorrent with a few key differences as well. The name IPFS is an abbreviation interplanetary file system, and the network is structured with the idea of building one large network servicing many clusters of devices. If you've ever seen the TV show The Expanse, you can probably picture the theoretical use case. If there were networks on a number of planets, the communication within a particular planet could be fast and reliable, but the communication from planet to planet may be slow and expensive. With this setup, however, a file would only need to enter one particular planet's network once before always being available within the network and no longer required to be sent from a centralized server on another planet. Put in more contemporary terms, however, uh, consider the idea of intercontinental communication. Say a file is made available on a server in the northeast United States. Uh, with the normal centralized internet, if somebody in Sydney, Australia wanted to access the data, would have to travel all the way around the world, taking extra time and putting extra stress on every piece of infrastructure along the way. Uh, with IPFS, however, after the first person in Sydney requested the file, the second person in Sydney would get it from the first, the third would simultaneously get it in parts from the first and second, and so forth. Um, finally, uh, one more quick example, this one a little bit more technical. Um, let's say there are three LANs, local area networks, each consisting of 100 devices using IPFS. Communication between devices within the same LAN is 200 megabits a second. Now, those three LANs are part of one WAN, wide area network, and communication between devices that are part of the WAN but part of a different LANs is 100 megabits a second. Last, any device communicating with the internet, a device that is neither part of the LAN or the WAN, is 25 megabits a second. With IPFS, if a computer wanted a file, it would first try and download it from the local LAN devices, and if that failed, they would try the WAN devices, and if that still failed, they would pull it from the internet, prioritizing the ideal route first. Additionally, since the file is catched on one of the LANs, if, if a device on a different LAN requested the file, it would go for the WAN, not the internet, saving speed, and plus now it's on two LANs, and so forth. As you can probably see, the concept sounds promising, so I'll continue on with the explanation, moving on to how you can actually use the system for yourself. So, the network basics. Each file on the IPFS network is identified with a hash, which is a string of text that is a mathematical derivative of the file. The beauty of hashes is that no matter where the file is coming from, the integrity of the file is guaranteed, because any alterations to the file will alter the hash. Uh, quick note, alterations to the file's name will not change the hash, only alterations to the file's content. Next, as mentioned in the previous section of this video, any device that is uploaded or requested a file will store and redistribute the file. Each device will continue to host the file as long as the IPFS service is running, until either the operator chooses to stop hosting a file, or the file stops being requested for some time and is automatically removed from the specific device to optimize storage. To avoid a file from being removed automatically from your device, you can pin the file so that it always remains stored on your local device. It is important that at least a device or two on the network has any particular file pinned, so that it's always available when requested. If you're attempting to host your own content, I will delve deeper into that in my next video, so stay tuned or check out the description to see if it's already been posted. Access and Clients Now with the basics out of the way, we can actually finally start utilizing the network. Starting out here, you will always have three options. The IPFS Client, Web Browsers, and Gateways. Beginning with Gateways, a gateway is a website which is attached to an IPFS node. For future reference, a node is just any device that is running IPFS which pulls file content off the IPFS network and then provides it to your browser for viewing and or downloading. IPFS.io and Cloudflare both have services like this and allow you to enter the address followed by a hash to view the content within the web browser. Say IPFS.io slash IPFS slash and then the hash. I'm bringing up gateways first because they're the simplest and easiest way for you to get access to data on the IPFS network and a great way to check it out if this is the first time you're accessing IPFS. Additionally, they also make it super easy for access on mobile devices and for sharing access to others who don't have IPFS installed on their devices. Secondly, as sort of a middle ground from a full-fledged client to a gateway, you can also run IPFS on some browsers. Browsers like Opera and Brave come pre-installed with the IPFS support, 
and plugins for Firefox, Chrome, and Chromium allow you to manually add IPFS support to those browsers as well. Uh, using IPFS within your browser allows you to utilize the network structure benefits of IPFS, but it does limit your capabilities in regarding to uploading or pinning content. Finally, to fully leverage the capabilities of IPFS, you can install the IPFS client. You can acquire the client at https colon slash slash ipfs.io and install it on Windows, Mac, or some Linux distros. Uh, with this, you'll be able to acquire files based on their hash, host files in a temporary or permanent manner, and help build up the IPFS network. Furthermore, as somebody who spent nearly the last decade experimenting with new and experimental software, I'm very glad to tell you that the graphical client is super easy to understand, even for my dumb brain, and since you already know what pinning is, what hashes are, and the basics of the way the client will behave, such as clearing out files that are not pinned, you should be able to use the IPFS client now uh, with very minimal experimentation. Also, I should note that the IPFS client can be used to self-host content such as videos and websites, which I will delve into in the next video. With this video coming to a closing, I would like to quickly talk about some of the few drawbacks of the IPFS system, however. One more minor drawback is the fact that there are not a ton of people using IPFS. Now, of course, with gateways and the like, the average internet user could be accessing content on IPFS and not even knowing what IPFS is, so it's a bit more of a minor issue. However, the other, more notable of the two, is the issue of speed. Like I said before, IPFS is experimental and it's lacking full-scale adoption at the moment. Uh, the biggest tangible effect is the speed at which files are located. Though regularly trafficked files and regularly trafficked nodes are, are extremely quick to be discovered, files towards the fringes of the network are a whole different story, and if you place a file on your device and try and load its hash in a gateway, it could actually be upwards of several minutes before a gateway to actually find the file and download it from your computer to the gateway and then display it in your browser. As a quick note, I've noticed that Cloudflare will often time out when it doesn't find it right away, where the IPFS.io gateway finds it in the amount in the same amount of time, but it doesn't time out and will just continue to load. So if you're experimenting around or you expect your file is going to take a long time to discover, make sure to use the IPFS.io gateway instead. Um, and now once the file has been loaded in the gateway, it will be catched for a fair amount of time. So the next time you go to load it, unless it's been too long, uh, will be quick. And I'll touch on this a little bit more in the next part of the series, but it is worth considering. Well, I hope that summarizes everything, and I hope you consider checking out IPFS and playing around with it. It's certainly a very promising new system, and I expect it has a good future ahead of it. And regardless, I find playing around with this stuff to be fun, so and you might as well. Anyway, thanks for watching.